Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. Happy Halloween. Thank you for joining us today. We are coming to you live from Astoria, Queens, New York. We love it if you're in the chat. I'm going to be on the chat a little bit here during the class. Just let us uh, know you're here, where you're watching from, if you're crafting along with us. Yes, I mean, if you've been to one of our classes before, you know we like to talk a lot and we love to hear from you. So if you ever have a question, anything, just, you know, join the chat. Why not? Yes, today we're going to be crafting up a faux uh, pumpkin that you can purchase at Michael's and turning it into an adorable little vintage pumpkin pail. Uh, you know, we are so inspired by all things vintage for the holidays. So we thought, how fun, another pumpkin carving idea, transfer a plain pumpkin into this adorable vintage pumpkin. And we're going to be making that today. We are also going to do a giveaway today with Fiskars. Uh, it's only open to the people that are watching now on this live video. Um, and we are going to be giving away some fun Fiskars tools. Yes. And that is, um, we'll do the giveaway at the end, of the, the end of the class. Yes, like always. We do a giveaway every class. So if this is your first time, you will want to join us next month for our next class. Yes, we have uh, Reading, California, Ooh. Orlando, Crafting Along, uh, Ohio, Heart of Kentucky. Ah, very cool. Yes. Well, welcome. We're so glad you're here. This really is our favorite time of year. We always say it just because Halloween is so much fun and then you have the holidays coming up. So I just feel like there's a lot of excitement. Yes, you can that. feel the energy. Yes. The holiday energy. <laughs> it's here. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, Modesto, California, Utah, Wisconsin, wow. more California. All right. I love that. Okay. Should we get started? I think we should. Okay. So like Dennis said, we are using a faux pumpkin. I think it works best because a real pumpkin isn't going to last too long, but you probably could do this craft with a real pumpkin if you wanted to. Yeah, I but I love these faux pumpkins that. because I you know. can purchase them pretty much anywhere. Michael's always has them in those big bins mm -hmm. in the front of the store or sometimes outside. I feel like they're always on sale. Yes, and what's great is they come in a wide variety of different colors and styles and sizes. Yes. Um, so you can really make one, a little mini one like this, or kind of think size. large and make one of the biggest ones, you know? Yes. All right. So the first thing we're going to do. We got a neighbor here from Astoria watching oh, or i don't know it could oh be a storia in it oregon be, yeah but missouri south texas hello everybody all right and i'm going to be using the other camera just to get a close-up all right Perfect. so the first thing we're going to do is um we're going to do what you always do for a pumpkin and we're going to draw everything out so i like to start with the top and we kind of want a nice big hole and I'm just lightly drawing. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. I always think with things that are, especially with things that are vintage, if they're not perfect, it almost just adds to the charm. So this hole already is looking a little uh, wonky, but I'm not too worried about that. And then we're gonna draw a really, really simple face. And I, I like to think of it as really, I don't need a lot of detail with this. I really just want it nice and simple. So I'm going to kind of keep it traditional and do two triangle um, eyes. And I'm going to just give it a little curve on the bottom. And that's almost going to make it look like it's smiling. Yes. And now Andrew's just drawing this freehand. Of course, you can always use uh, clip art for a reference or even sometimes when you buy like a pumpkin carving kit, they actually come with templates that you can use. For our inspiration for our vintage pumpkin, we actually Googled vintage pumpkin faces mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a whole bunch of, yes. uh, sorry, it's no, hard to understand where to go. Of different styles and faces come yeah. up, really use the internet as a guide, as a resource, I you know, because it's all there. How cute is that I little mean, face you could do? adorable. I think that's a really great idea. I think always looking stuff up for inspiration. I mean, why not if it's there, especially with things that are on the vintage side, because you'll have years and years of different styles that you really could choose from. So it's super fun. So I'm just keeping this really easy. I don't know how much you can see. Oh, you can see. Okay. So I have two eyes, a nose, and now I'm going to do a mouth. I'm not going to worry about the teeth with this one because we're going to be adding that in, in a little bit. Yes, with our insert. With I would insert. like to hear from everybody in the chat. Do you still carve pumpkins? You know, I feel like when I was growing up, that was such a big a tradition in my house where we would have a pumpkin carving evening. Yes. You know, I, I do people still do that? I think so. I think it's one of those traditions that really have held on. Never goes out of style. And if you do carve, when do you carve them? 
Like, yes, do you Kathy, them? every year. Every year. All right. Uh, one thing I do like to look at when I am drawing this is putting it on the table and making sure that I didn't go too, too low, which I don't think I did. I think this is pretty good. Yes. So here we have our face. If we have anyone who's crafting along with us, please let us know. I don't want to go too fast or if you have specific questions, also let us know. All right, so now- Yes, we have every year. I haven't, Jenny said, I haven't in a few years, we're planning on doing it this year. Carved one or two on family night. My son carved on and threw the seeds out the front door. Next year, there was a huge pumpkin growing. Oh, oh my God. gosh, that's so insane. Fun. That's cool. That's so cool though. I love that. All right, so you can use a wide variety of different tools. We like to use the Fiskars tools because they're the best. They are the And best. actually, we're going to be giving away the heavy duty- um, uh, This is the craft knife. Yes, which is great for carving. Of course, we recommend an adult using this. Mm -hmm. I really know, like for it. obvious reasons. I really <laughs> like it because you can easily switch out the blades. So if your blade does get dull, which I will say they really don't get dull very quickly, yeah, you can easily switch it out without having to buy the whole thing. Some companies, you know, you have to buy the whole uh, the whole uh, um, the craft knife, You know, yeah. Yes. So this you really can just switch it out, which is really really great. Yes, they carve the fake pumpkins every year so they can save them for the following years. Hello from Farda, so SoCal here. All right, and I'm gonna start carving. Um, you know, we recently went to the pumpkin blaze up in Hudson Valley, um, and we we met with a, a pumpkin carving specialist, and he gave us a whole bunch of pumpkin tips, carving yes. tips, which we are gonna pass along to you today. Yes. And one of the tips that I never really thought about was to carve away from you. <laughs> which seems so basic, but it's kind of like, yeah, safety first. Like you don't want to get cut, uh, you know, and there are a lot of different ways to carve your pumpkin. Some people do um, a nail or tack to do small holes. Oh yeah, instead of drawing it out. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then you do a little connect the dots, la la la. But um, we're just going to kind of go for it. Okay, so cut away from yourself. Yeah. Especially when using something as sharp as a craft knife or a utility knife. You really do want to just be careful as you're doing that. If and what's so, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, well, if you have kids, this might be a really great uh, step for you to do instead of. Yes. And then actually we're going to be making facial inserts for our pumpkin here, which you can either glue on or change out year after year. But um, that would be a great part for the kids to do. Yes. Have the adults there's, do the I carving. There's a lot of steps for kids to do, but I do think this one step is, is best to leave it for the adults. And I want to say, excuse my nails. We did our nails. We went to go see a Lizzo concert here in <laughs> yes. Madison Square Garden. So fun, but we wanted to add a little bling. So we did our nails and, and you know, it's been a week and a half now. Right. Still haven't taken it off. But you know what? I think for the Halloween season, it works really well. Oh yeah. And now what's so great about this knife is you can either go up and down like I'm doing here, or it's really just super easy to, to Pull or I, push. I'm I, kind of doing it towards me. I, the, of course, the rule that well, I said. You, you are leaving a lot of space between, but I do think the, um, I do like the up and down motion when carving. I do think that's the easiest. And as you can see, I do think- and I guess you, you also have like the most control. Yeah. I think rather than kind of pulling, right, like you don't want to kind of go rogue and, you know, next thing you know, your, your body is turned into a pumpkin. <laughs> what? Focus on the carving, Dennis, not on the jokes. I know, I keep yes. looking at Andrew for a I reaction know, I'm like... while I'm doing this. And there we are back go. at the beginning. And let's see what's inside. Ooh, I love carving faux pumpkins because you don't have to deal with all the guts, all the mess. And like someone said, you can keep them year after year, which is really, yes. really great. Okay, and now it's time to work on our face. Now, another yeah. tip we got, which we've never done before. Actually, this will be the first time we do it. The pumpkin carver who we talked to said, you should start with the thing in the middle of the pumpkin. Start with the nose. I feel like I'm always an eye person. I always start with the, the eye eyes, yes, and then kind of go the down. Yes. But they said structurally. S structurally, it's best to carve from the from center, the center going, going out. out. And I don't think that's as important with a faux pumpkin because faux pumpkins are super sturdy. But if you've ever ca carved a real pumpkin and you carve a spot and you kind of get like a caved in part, that is kind of why. So start with the there middle. There you go. Should I be showing this other one too? We also use this a lot for our pumpkin. It's mm -hmm. a serrated knife here. 
same deal. It comes easy to de detach and adjust and swap out. Yeah, that's another great Fiskars tool. Yeah, you can try it. You can do that sure. one if you want. This one's great too. I think this one uh, for pumpkin carving is very uh, standard. If you get a pumpkin kit, I feel like you usually get like a serrated uh, blade, which uh, really does help with the up and down motion. Yes, but if, um, you know, this one does create a bit of a mess. Yeah. So the other one gives you a smoother, less messy cut. This, you could already see some of the, the filling in there coming out. It really does. It has to nose in the center, so eyes can be adjusted to the nose. Yes, Phyllis. Okay, Phyllis. I like, I like that idea too. I didn't even think of that. It'll eat. Everything is much easier, really, like centered. This guy also had the pumpkin thing. He said that you shouldn't push in your pumpkin pieces; that you should pop them out. That's a good tip. Which sure. I don't know. Like, I don't, am I, a, do I pop them out or do I push it in usually? I feel like I, I I'm a pusher in her. Really? I'm a pusher oh, in no. I don't know. I yeah, find me. it like so satisfying. You just like push it right in. Yeah, but he says that's not good. That's not good because it not can, good. it can like also create a hole in the pumpkin. Which... So now this is where you can decide. You see, it's like a little rougher around the edges there. That's with the serrated knife. I will say, I do think if you're working with kids, the serrated one, is a little more kid friendly, mm -hmm. and it. But I think they're both great options. I actually like. I was this gonna look. say because we're going for a vintage vibe. Should I keep this one? Sure. Okay. Now I'm going up to the eyes. So you just want to push the knife in and then go in and out, in and out. <laughs> like. Do what I say, not what I do. Is that a phrase? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, carve away from you, kids. Well, you are carving away from you. You're not carving towards your fingers. Yeah, that's true. And I'm just, as I'm carving, I, you know, I feel the little give here. So I'm just kind of really reinforcing as I carve, just so that the pumpkin doesn't dent or kind of, uh, you know, shift or change on me here. We used to, Andrew's birthday is coming up, and for a birthday tradition that we had, which we kind of stopped, but maybe we should get back to, is we used to carve pumpkins on your birthday every year. That's right. My birthday is October 19th, so it's kind of far for pumpkin carving. We'd still do it. Can you, I'm going to move the camera. Okay, yeah, just, sorry. No one wants to see your wrists. <laughs> They're very nice, though. No, you have great wrists. <laughs> Sorry, I was just catching up on the chat. Are any, or is anybody dressing up this year for Halloween? Do we have costumes? Or if you think of a costume for us, we always like to do a couple's costume, but we're having trouble this year. So if you think of anything, let us know. We'd love to hear your ideas. Wow, we have an October 19th birthday as well. Oh my gosh, two Libras in the house. Mine was the eighth. Happy oh, birthday, happy Jenny. Happy birthday. That's so great. Mine is oh a little down gosh. there. Is that okay? I don't mind it. I, you know, really, you can't make mistakes with this because even if it's not 100% lined up or anything, you really do have that. Um, it gives it a real nice vintage vibe. Also, I think pumpkins that are hand carved shouldn't look perfect. Yeah, at least that's what I tell myself because mine never do. <laughs> you know, pumpkin carving, it's a skill. It's a skill. You know, I feel like people always like when we first started Crafty Lumberjacks, people were like, you must be great at pumpkin carving. And we were like, actually, no, because I feel like it is like something that you're either good at or you struggle with. And I've always done like the basic, basic, you know, triangle nose, triangle eyes, you know, smile with one tooth. You know, I keep my pumpkin carving very basic. Very nice. And of course, we're working on our Fiskars uh, mat here. I love this Fiskars map because it holds up. You live <laughs> yes. in a one bedroom apartment, you can kind of actually see the grooves right here. It folds up, it's like a tri-fold. So it fits 
in so many places and then it's massively big, which I always appreciate. I'm actually gonna get the little pack real quick. Okay. And what's great about these pumpkins too is that they're really easy to wash off and clean. So if there's any pencil marks there that you don't wanna be seen. Thinking about going to be the witch's walk in Sandusky, Ohio. I'm making a hocus pocus green scrap of wood. Sorry. Yes, love that. I do want that fold. You could go as grumpy old men. Oh, yes, but it does look so already. cute so far, and we barely did anything. Uh, yeah, we're already grumpy old men every day of the year. I this love this. this. Okay, so now we're going to go to our paint portion because as you could see with the pumpkin, it's this like cream color and we really don't want that. We want it to be like a nice yellow. So of course Michaels has a million different types of paint. We're using this kind of uh, darkish orangish yellow, which I think works really well. And we're just going to add that to the edges of our jack lantern. Yes, and I just wanted to use my uh, pencil here just to erase a little bit. I think you could even use water. And we're gonna actually paint the pumpkin so you don't have to worry too much about that. I know, I was just demonstrating how easy it is. No, right, dearie. Okay, and now see, you see the inside of the pumpkin is white there. I already went over that, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Morticia Gomez Adams, my other son and his girlfriend, the bride of Frankenstein. Yes. I love that. Pastels work great to get rosy cheeks. Yes, I love that. Oh, that's cute. So now we want this yellow kind of color here. So we're just going to paint the edges like what you see in the pumpkin and just lightly kind of color it. And you really do not need to be perfect. Um, perfect with it. You can be really sloppy. I have a nice uh, cleanup technique I'll show you when it comes to like the eyes and the nose. But doing this little detail really does take it to the next level. Now you can paint the inside of your pumpkin. However, if you're going to light up your pumpkin, I think the like the, having uh, the white having something yeah like a white is really going to help the, the LED candle reflect and then give you like the brightest um, jack-o-lantern. Yes. If you paint it orange, it's going to be a little more dim. So that's a personal choice. And don't forget, we're doing a giveaway today at the end of the class. We do ask you to send in our ans your answers uh, to our social media, Crafty Lumberjacks, on all platforms. Or you can even email your answer at craftylumberjacks at gmail.com. Yeah, you can email us or you can DM us on Instagram. Yes, and we'll usually reach out, let you know we got it, and then you won't hear from on us unless you win. Okay, so the tip is use a damp oh. paper towel and then uh, just kind of go and go up. So like go towards the, the cut piece and that's gonna just kind of get any edges that you didn't like clean perfect. Now with the giveaway, you can Google the answer right? Yes, of course. It's not really about the answer. It's really just luck. So we kind of put everyone into a pool and then we pick them by random. Yes. And also if you miss anything that we're talking about today during the class, we also have this post, um, the project on our blog, craftylumberjacks.com. So you can revisit that. And like they said, these videos are on Michael's YouTube channel about 24 hours after uh, the live one airs. Yeah, so you can always so, rewatch, mm -hmm, or... revisit, and of course use the hashtag make it with Michaels, tag Fiskars, tag us, tag Michaels. We love to see your projects, especially when they're inspired by projects we've made. Um, and also projects that we haven't made. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we always love seeing what people come up with on their own. It's always, I'm always like, why didn't I think of that? You know? Yeah, and actually we get, like a lot of people ask us, like, where do you get all your ideas from? And sometimes it's from, all of you, fellow crafters and creators that are sharing their projects, oh, you inspire us to kind of uh, keep the, you know, craft train going. Choo choo.
Of course, if you have any questions, were we using this? For the yeah, we were using that. You can uh, ask us if you have questions about Halloween or about us or about any other crafting questions. You, you got us, you got you us now, us right so here. let us know. You know, what I really love about holiday crafting in general, whether it be Halloween or uh, Christmas, I, I love crafting while watching movies. That's something we both really love to do. And this is a great craft to do while watching a movie because you can always kind of take your time with it. You know, when we're doing these classes, we're trying to do it as quickly as we can, but we always say that really crafting is about the journey, not yes, about not the, the outcome. End product. So, you know, if you're having a good time while you're crafting, no matter how your craft comes out, you're gonna have a memory attached to it. And that's that's important. So I feel like you'll remember how you felt when you made this. Okay, you want this? Have some like lettuce. Sure. Do you have a favorite movie you watch every Halloween? Oh my gosh, it's kind of hard to pick one. I mean, we always love to watch Hocus Pocus. Mm -hmm. uh, we love horror movies, so we're always looking for new horror movies to watch. We always love to watch Beetlejuice, of oh, course. Beetlejuice is so good. What other ones? I'm trying to think, was there? We usually do a nightmare before Christmas in between um, Halloween and Thanksgiving, just because we feel like it's a nice way to transition out of um, Halloween and kind of head into the other holidays. That is looking so cute. Okay, it's not perfect, but I know we're That's on okay. a little we're time crunch time. here. Oh my gosh, Coraline. Oh, I haven't seen that in so long. Pee wee. Oh yes, Pee wee, large Marge. You know, a lot of people ask us too what our favorite movie is, uh, our favorite horror scary movie. And I always say it's Gremlins, <laughs> but Gremlins is not something that I watch um, during this season. I watch Gremlins every Christmas. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a it, Christmas movie. It does take place during Christmas, so why not? Oh, Halloween Town. Oh, Halloween Town. I always try to get Dennis to watch Halloween Town. Yeah, not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm now putting some extra paint onto this plate. And what I chose were earth tones. I'm just, I'm looking to take this faux pumpkin and make it look really nice and vintage. And there are some ways we can do that. I'm actually going to use the silicone mat. Under wrap two with mummy. I haven't heard that, that one. I'm gonna look that up though, under wrap two. Okay, this is one of my favorite parts to do. You want me to take this? Sure. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just give this little cutie a distressed look. Now, when I looked up stuff online, I saw a lot had almost like a green stippled effect coming from the bottom. And I thought that was really cute. So I found this really nice sage green. And I'm gonna start with that. And I like to start with things that you can't see when I'm starting. So I'll usually start on the bottom of uh, what I'm working with or the back. That's how I like to start because I feel like when you add paint to your brush, a lot of times there's like too much on mm -hmm. it. And then when you get to like, you don't wanna start on the part that everyone's gonna look at first. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my brush. I don't have a lot and I'm kind of following the lines of the pumpkin and I'm just going kind of up just like an inch or so or two inches. Yeah, and this is what's really gonna give it that vintage kind of vibe and feel. Just kind of the distressing um, totally. technique. Werewolf by Night on Disney was surprisingly good, Jenny said. Mm -hmm. Leslie, Get Out is truly a chilling movie. Oh yeah. We wanna that. go see Smile. And of course <laughs> we're gonna go see Halloween Kills, or sorry, Halloween Ends. Oh yes, I always And that. actually we were in the audience the other day for The View when Jamie Lee Curtis was there and that yes. was super fun. Do you see that? It's really subtle, but it really does add such a vintage vibe. I love this little unexpected What pop paint color print. is that? This is Folk, folk art. art. Uh, wild wasabi. Hmm. So now I'm going to take a little bit of a dark orange. This is a burnt orange. It's a folk art um, terracotta. And I'm going to, again, like follow the lines. And I'm going to start on the back. And I don't have too much on my 
brush and I really want like a streaky look. So I'm gonna go streaked down and I'm following the lines of the pumpkin. And you can already see like what that has done. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives it a really like uh, natural look rather than kind of this fake, um, you know, fake pumpkin look. Yes. <laughs> So I'm going to do that and I'm going to just kind of go from the bottom and do that as well. If the green comes with it, that's fine with me. I really don't mind that. And we're working on our silicone mat here. This is really great. And the, another Fiskars product, which maybe we can throw into the giveaway too, since we're using oh, it and featuring it. But uh, this is great because uh, it's water resistant and it kind of uh, is paint resistant in a sense. So when you're using like water-based acrylic paint, really easy to clean up and wipe yes. up. Uh, we also do Mod Podge projects on this with, um, you know, decoupaging and things. And also the mat is self-healing. So that means, you know, if you cut it, if you whatever, it kind of just warps back to its normal sense. And here I'm adding just a little bit of like a tan and I'm doing the same thing. I think when you're thinking of adding any type of like distressed look, or if you're trying to make something look like vintage style, think of using more than one color. That's just really going to take it to the next level and really give it dimension. And that's what really all we really want to try to do is just make this look as worn as possible without making it look too decrepit. Tracy just said, this mat is good for working with resin. Oh yeah, we don't we don't do a lot of resin pro products or projects. projects. We yeah. were kind of um we did we dabbled we dabbled we, dabbled. we had like we're a dabblers. resin phase. We <laughs> yes. So I'm even going to take some of that yellow and I'm just going to highlight some of these lines. Oops. How is that looking on camera, Dennis? Good. Oh my gosh, he's a cutie. Patty said, great to set your hot glue gun on too. Yes. That's so true. Okay, can you see those details? You can. Very cute. Very cute, very cute. And that's pretty much it for the distressing part. Do you think it needs more or do you think it's good? Um, I think that's up to you. I think we can move on. They're also, you know, they actually sell like uh, distressing kits and things like that, Tim Holtz has like a whole line for scrapbooking that we've recently just started to use. A uh, really great, easy yeah. way. Like we worked with paper, uh, you know, if you wanted to kind of distress some paper rather than doing like a tea bath or a coffee dye. Yes. It's so easy and so quick. And it gives you really the same results. I added some more just because I felt like- Hey guys. Yeah. Um Sorry to interrupt. Um, uh, we have a question here that came in privately. Um, do you, what's the name of the first color you use, the one that matches the color of the pumpkin? That one we used was this. Was it this one? No, it's wrong. Oh, here it is. This is the Craft Smart Saffron Yellow. Perfect. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you. I'm also going to do the top. We kind of forgot about the top. This is kind of something if you want to do, you can, but you really don't have to. But you can just kind of. Yeah, and I think time. I think you the color doesn't really matter. Like as long as it's kind of like a pumpkin, yellow, orange looking color. That's right. I think, you know, because again, that's just kind of us being um, you know, a particular. Like yes. we didn't want the white edges. So, you know, right. anything that you anything, can do to just any kind of type of them yellow, down. I think is like totally fine too. And you can, you know what you can do if you're at Michael's, you can if you're getting your craft supplies, grab them, bring the pumpkin to the um aisle and then pick your colors that oh, yeah, really that's match great it really, really well. Yeah, because what's so great about this is you can see like the paint colors and they're really pretty accurate mm -hmm. when you turn them over and look at the bottom. So we do that a lot. We look, we kind of match things that's up. That's a good tip. Look at the bottom look of the at paint the bottom. instead of this. Don't look at this right, so yes, much. Yes. Look at the bottom of the paint. That's where the paint is. Um, I want to show our tree too. You're going to show our time. tree? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to have time. We're going to show, we do our um, Halloween tree every year. We're just going to let this dry a little. And I'll show the Halloween tree. Do you want to fix the lights or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every year we do a Halloween tree. This is our sixth annual Halloween tree. 
all crafty and uh, made by us. This is a Michael's exclusive here for the people on the live. Do you want to explain what a Halloween tree yeah, is? Yeah, a Halloween Christmas tree is people. basically like a Christmas tree, but um, with Halloween things. Oh, so yeah. this year, our theme was uh, the devil and hell. So we have like plastic spells. Of course, everything here was purchased, purchased from Michael's. Uh, we have the faux branches. This is the lantern fly. I don't know um, if you have the lantern fly. You turn it up, but it's we an got these bushels from Michael's. Uh, this was the paper we were talking about that we did the distressing with Tim Holtz's distressing ink. So, and of course, cool. we use our Fiskars paper cutter for the. Well, of course, would we use any other? And you know, we want to have fun with it. So the lantern flies are supposed to be kind of funny, and like each skull is a devil that is smoking. So we just you want like a little bit of whimsy. We don't need it to be scary. Yeah, but that is our Halloween tree. How is that drying? That is drying great. I think you could come on over okay. if you want. Back here. That was a nice little. And of course, we take out our trip. apartment. We go all out for Halloween here. Okay, so our next step is to do the the, the pumpkin pail part. Pail part, the actual like holder. Yeah, so for this, we're using like a thick wire. Um, you can find that like at the jewelry section, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna actually use the wire to poke a hole in the side. Of course, you want it as centered with like the, the line of the, um, the mold of the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Is that dry? Not dry yet. Oh, it's not really dry, but that's okay. And I'm just going to uh, poke it in about like a half inch down from the top. Oops. I don't want to get like paint on there. Oh, that's a, or don't worry about the paint job. Or, if not, I'm actually going to give this a little poke with my craft blade here. Great. I feel like we always have our craft blade handy because we use it for so many different things. Even when we think we're not going to use it, we're like, just get the craft blade, it'll be easier. it's live that's why and that's why there we go is it going off you know a craft this craft knife works really great he just needs to get a little more but if you um are a little worried to do that you could always take a drill oh yeah kind of just drill it right in uh-huh Phyllis like the tree. Thank you, Phyllis. Thanks, Phyllis. My paint all over my hands. I'm sorry. That's okay. I actually can't see the video. I also think what we're dealing with, you with the pumpkin, you will see that like with the seam, it's the hardest part of the pumpkin because it's two pieces glued together. So this is kind of <laughs> the trickiest part. I'm gonna need the air air on after this. You're doing great. Is the wire black? The wire is black. It's this nice thick gauged wire. I'm not sure the how thick it is, but we just oh looked gosh. for the thickest. You want me to try? Sure, go for it. Uh oh, famous last words, right? Okay. There we go. That's what's great about having a crafting buddy because if there's something that you can't do or don't feel like doing, you just pass it off to someone else. Yeah. And say, you know what? I'm over this. Can I'm you do this? It. So then what you want to do is, uh, well, you can, you yes. can take over, sir. This is my part. Yes. My so when we're doing these crafts, we're like, okay, what part will you do? Yeah, uh, you'll be I in do. charge of this. And this, we just want to add like a fun little coil to the wire here. And you can use that so, one, so, yeah, but can you see it or not? I'm gonna come around. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the pumpkin wire here and I'm just gonna wrap it around my pencil. And of course you can use a marker, you can use a, a, a butter knife, yeah, to. a finger. And this just kind of adds that little whimsy charm. I love this, this pumpkin. was Dennis's idea to do and I thought it was so cute. And then I noticed we have like a, a jack-o'-lantern that kind of looks similar to this and it has coils kind of similar. 
actually when our niece and nephew were here. Another... Sure. It's fine. For... Okay. When our niece and nephew were here, um, <laughs> my nephew could not stop playing with these coils on the pumpkin. Do you remember that? Yeah. So we're like, could you not? Could you not <laughs> do we that, this? Please? Or a lot of these projects we make, we keep, you know, so we want to kind of do it as best as we can, even though it's live and anything can happen. But we tend to keep a lot of the things we make. So we want them to look at least decent enough that we can pull them out year after year. And then Dennis is just folding yeah, up. Yes, so I'm just pressing in the wire. But if you have so a hot glue gun and you so want to just glue it. it oh yeah, there it is. You see how that, there, oh, see. sorry. That's okay. Is fold it in, do you see it? Yeah, like almost like a paper clip, just kind of like push it in. Oh my gosh. Now Dennis, do you want to just quickly paint this? Remember we took like a little bit of like this. Sure, the green. Yeah, and we, I just thought, you know what? It's, if the pumpkin is looking, distressed i feel like the coil should too so we just took a little bit of paint and just like dennis is doing i mean this takes no time at all and it really does change the look of it you know you want to give them pumpkin to talk about hey oh. there it is there it is i can't Let's believe give them pumpkin to talk about that one just came to me i didn't even have um to google that I'm going to put this right here for one second. Let's get on pumpkin to talk about. Oh, Andrew's just getting <laughs> good, I noticed good call. Means... We just saw our computer battery was low. I'm like, oh, 10%. These things, they don't have the charge anymore. <laughs> okay, that's pretty They don't good. make them like they used to. Like very looks... very painted oh yeah i like what I you're doing though take your hands finger, dull it down dull it down over time it also dull down but i do think it really does add a nice a nice touch it's all about those small details yes. all right watch and then how did you curl the wire <laughs> leslie you missed it we took the wire and we just curled it around a pencil you can use a paintbrush where's that extra wire we... oh have it. here we go really easy and actually i got this my mom i got my crafting bug from my mom and this is something that she used to do uh for one of her crafts that she made oh the gingerbread the gingerbread man Aww. and you just wrap 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 and then it gives you a nice little that's so nice that's cute that's cute to think about for like <laughs> thank you. my son called me and i missed it oh my gosh well, you know. but that's nice your son is calling you <laughs> yeah all your parents people i was gonna say that coil is a nice reminder if you're uh, gonna create some ornaments or something like that it's a nice um detail to throw in okay so now we're going to uh do the inside part which i think is probably the most interesting part of the craft so we're actually gonna be saving our scraps when, when you cut. So when you make this, you're gonna to wanna to save your, your little triangles and we're going to draw them onto a piece of vellum paper. Now we found this at Michael's actually in the poster board aisle. So it was a big, massive piece. And what I'm going to do-, do you to Take the camera or you good? I think of, maybe you could straighten it or something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace like around it with my pencil ah. lightly. Can you just bring it closer to that? Yeah, because we're going to cut out each piece. You know, I'm just going to take it. Sorry, That's everybody. okay. We just want to give you the best view here. I add battery lights, yes. You so, got to get that Halloween glow. That's right. I love it. So I'm just going to go a little bit far. I just want to make sure that there's enough around this where I won't see through. Does that make sense? I just don't want this paper to be smaller than the holes I cut, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I have those two eyes, which you can't see, but that's okay because I'm going to be using a permanent marker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, here, I'll even just draw these out. Yeah, that's better, you can see it better. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to draw, you know, the pupils of the eye. And what I like to do is I like to start in a corner and just draw like a half circle. And I don't want it to be 
a little nervous that's even too big just because I, I want to make sure you see like all aspects of the eye but we can kind of worry about that later. And what I'm gonna do now is something that I think you should not overlook is do almost like a little gleam in the eye. And all you have to do is draw a circle and keep that circle um, open. And then you're just going to take your- or clear, I guess. Clear, yeah. We're not gonna draw in the circle. We're gonna keep that clear. And I'm just gonna draw this in. And now you might be thinking, I don't want to see any um, any like pen strokes, marker strokes. If you're like me and you feel that way, what you can do after is turn it over and draw on it again. I just don't want to get the mat. Does that make sense? This way, it's going to be more opaque, and you're going to um, not see all those. Yeah, it's almost gonna look painted. I always feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> and that's just weird. That is weird. Um, I think the gleam in the eye gives it a real cartoon look and also really kind of captures Almost like a vintage vibe for sure. Yeah, very cute. Patty said, I can't wait to do this. <gasps> Patty, yes, I'm Patty. so excited. I really do hope that you show us what you make. And then we're gonna be using some red. Now this is, when I was looking up um, pumpkins like this, like the inserts were always like non-traditional colors. I feel like we're purists with Halloween. We usually stick to the Halloween Orange, black, Orange, purple. black, yeah. Even though our tree is actually red this year, or like has red. Yeah, we did go. But they have a lot of blues and reds, and I thought the red was like a fun, unexpected pop. Even though it's been done for years, I thought it was still kind of unexpected. So I thought I would add that. Something this soft. Are you? Hello, are we still on? One computer is working, one is not. I'm not sure what's happening. Look how great this looks. Okay, now Adorable. I'm going to, I'm gonna do the nose now. Now for the nose, I know it's kind of small. I'm actually gonna do a red nose. So I'm just going to, oh. I'm just gonna do that and I can cut it out after, you know? Totally, totally. Turtler. And I'm gonna do both sides because why not? Great. And now I'm gonna work on the mouth. Now for the mouth, I really wanted, it to have teeth because that's what I saw a lot of. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to trace it. Tiffany said, you could use the silicone mat as you color the backside. Why Tiffany, I, I was thinking the same thing, oh but gosh. I didn't want to say anything. You know, Tiffany, I'm <laughs> going to say why I put it away was because I thought this was too close in the similar color and I wasn't sure if you'd be able to uh, see it, but I regret every minute of it. Uh, if you ever need an excuse, Andrew's got him. <laughs> Andrew's got him. He's full of excuses. Yes, Dennis sometimes calls me the excuse queen. Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> I'll say something that yeah, I don't need an excuse. I'm just saying something. And then it's a big story of why he had to do it. So now for the team, for the team I'm just uh, almost making like a repeated W. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or a repeated U even. And I'm just going like this and I'm or like corn, corn, it's corn. Uh, while he's doing that, I'm just going to plug our next class. Michael's is actually doing 12 days of holiday card making. And we are going to be doing one of those days on November 6th. That will be our next class with Michael's and Fiskars. Of course, we'll be doing another giveaway then too. So you'll want to join. Uh, you know, I always say if it's free, it's for me. So I, we hope to see you there. And we're going to be making this adorable greetings from in New York uh, multi-layered shaker card uh, for um, our card making class. I think this card is so cute. And so we actually cute. learned a lot as we made it. This was our first shaker card. So I feel like we're going to bring in we got a, little, um, a lot of stuff tips, there, but that's okay. That's because I threw that it. That was like the demo. I know it was in like a closet. I was like, where is it? Five minutes before this class started. Um, but I feel like we learned stuff where I was like, oh, okay. I, 
yeah, this, this is, is a good helpful thing to know. And things that I couldn't find when I was looking stuff up. Very cute and terrifying. You know, it kind of <laughs> looks like really scary until you oh, put like it to a the Stephen face. King. I thought film. like the Baba Duke. Oh, was, like Baba yes, Duke vibes. Yes. Did anyone give us any uh, good Halloween costumes? Did we talk about what we were? Grumpy old men. Grumpy old men. That <laughs> was a good one. We were. We've been um, Mario and Luigi. Mm -hmm. which is great we've been what else have we been in gar <laughs> we've been bugs bunny and the tasmanian devil yes and we've been harry and mar from home alone um and i love creative cards so leslie you'll have to come join and you know again they're doing 12 days of different card projects so that's going to be really fun and it's going to be done in early november so you can get a head start if you're someone who likes to make your own cards for the holidays you know, it sneaks up on you. So it's good that these classes are gonna be early. It's so true. Okay. Now I'm going to cut this out. Awesome. Yeah. Very Let's cute. See. Oh, it's smudged a little here. I know, I, I saw that. That's okay, you're not gonna see it. So I'm gonna cut this out using these uh, multimedia shears. I love these. These are, of course, from Fiskars, but they cut through so many different types of uh, materials. So if you have like cardboard, card stock, it really just makes this, it really nice and easy. <laughs> this, this translucent uh, paper or whatever, because it does have like a thicker. This is, yeah, um, it's like this texture is very thick. It's like a very, it's like a plastic vinyl almost. And actually we're going to be giving away a pair of these scissors for our Fiskars giveaway. So cute. So cute. Tiffany just shared the link, but of course, um, we'll be giving it away today. And also, they carry them at Michael's. Check them out. Um, and actually, when we first started working with Fiskars, they sent us a pair of these and they engraved our names. We don't use them because they're too precious, but they engraved our names on the scissors. Yes, so was, they're so that. special to us. So special that we never use them. <laughs> well, you can't. <laughs> We don't want anything to happen to them. Of course. So I'm just cutting these out. I'm not being too careful. Again, I want to make sure that I have more. Marty of McFly it. and Doc Brown. Oh, That's good. We talked about that. Oh, have you who? seen the latest videos like trending from Comic Con? Oh, yeah. Those are so really sweet with Michael J. Fox. Those are really oh. sweet. Okay. That is indeed an honor. I know, right? That was so special. Oh, I'm not doing this right. Like I just said. Here we go. Okay, I just cut this out wrong because I'm thinking about Halloween and everything, but you do want to leave a little bit of a lip. I should have thought of that for the mouth, you know, lip, no? Get it? Okay, cold, cold room. <laughs> Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Okay, so now we're going to glue these in. Now, Dennis, do you want to do this part or you want me to just do it? Uh, you can do it. Or you want me to do it? No, do you need I a break? No, 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 I can do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glue gun. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the edges. I'm just going to do here and there. I don't need to go crazy. I think if you're doing this, a low temp glue gun is best. Low Always. temp are usually we like, like working with the low temp. Usually the small ones. And so just cute. Putting those in. And of time. course, you know, we're using like black, red, like you said, but like this, make it your own. Like make we've seen own. a lot of pastel pumpkins and Halloween things. Like, if that's your vibe, like, you know, have a pink mouth, have a baby blue mouth, whatever you want, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I Actually, really, oh, I was going to say, I feel like um, I've been seeing so many different styles of Halloween that in years past, like, it wasn't really a thing. I like seeing right, people right. really have their own take. And what we did with this one, which we thought would be fun, was we actually added the um, inserts with thumbtacks because we thought, like, maybe we would get tired of this face. And then we would kind of change them out, you know, if we were feeling like, ah, I'm not into this smile anymore, or this light is creeping me out or whatever. Um, and that was a fun little way. Oh, that one fell off. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so I started from the bottom and I'm going up. That's because I don't want my hand to be hitting. If I started with the eyes, my hand ah. could be hitting the eyes a lot. So I think starting from the bottom up is a really great tip. Christine asks, clear wax paper? 
Question mark? You know what? That would work great. You could use parchment paper as well. I believe the originals of these were done in parchment paper. So I think wax paper or parchment would totally work. Yeah. What's great about these though is that it's really uh, sturdy. Yes. And I guess if we should say, of course, as a faux pumpkin, you shouldn't put a real candle in here. Yeah. So uh, an LED nice. one is best. Okay. Well, is necessary. Is necessary. Thank you for that. Best and necessary. Necessary. It's very cute. Oh, Melissa said, not sure how markers would work on wax paper, but the oh, parchment would. Yes, yeah, totally. Right. Or, I mean, you could always paint too. You can use acrylic paint, do the same thing. We just thought uh, the marker would kind of, you know, speed up the time. Yeah, I also think you're going to get more of a opaque look with the paint uh -huh. versus uh -huh. the marker. The marker really, you really see through it. Oh my gosh, so adorable. This one, I feel like they both have such different Oh, that one's character. Well. Oh, that one knows spell. That's okay. But look at the character difference. I mean, they're so cute. I think these are so charming. Yeah, they're adorable. And we, you had, can... we had a little leaf. Um, oh, yes. I cut out a leaf. We lost you a little leaf. Here, I'll cut out a leaf real quick. We have okay. a minute. We have a minute. Have yeah. a minute. So what I can take is I can do these same scissors because they cut so well. And I can cut a little leaf for the top if you wanted to just like add a little extra something. So what I like to do is just fold it and I'm going to like eyeball this, but I'm just going to cut out kind of like a little leaf looking thing. It's cute, Here. right? And I'll glue it. And you know what, if we had more time in the class today, I would actually add a little bit of paint to it because why not, right? Right. You need that distressed look. And I'm just going to glue it right on top of there. I like the leaf. It does kind of give a little bit of like an apple vibe, but I think it's cute. You know what you could do is take a little bit of wire and add the leaf to the wire to make yes, it look like it's on yes. a vine. You ever do that when you're crafting? You're like thinking of more, all the things. More. You're like, oh, I could do this and never finish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this project will go on and on Forever. and on. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're at that time where we're getting towards the end of the class. Love this so much. You can make your own and the vintage ones are so expensive. They really I know they really are. do. Yeah, they're really expensive. Yeah. We can switch the camera around. We'll go over our giveaway. Um, hello, it's okay. us. Huh. The, the men behind the curtain. Okay. So for our giveaway today, thank you so much. This is utterly charming. We had the best time. Thank you for joining us. We love Halloween so much. Uh, we are going to ask our trivia question in today's giveaway. You will win the Fiskars Heavy Duty Craft Craft Blade. We also have the Mixed Media Shears. Uh -huh. We talked about giving away the silicone mat. Yes, and an OG orange hair, <laughs> OG orange handled pair of scissors, which we always give pretty much for every giveaway. Um, yes. Yeah. So what you have to do, we're going to ask a trivia question. When you have your answer, please send us your answer via DM on Instagram or uh, TikTok or um, any social media at Crafty Lumberjacks, or you can email us your answers at craftylumberjacks at gmail.com to be entered into the giveaway. It's only for the people live now watching the class. Yes. Um, and we hope you join us for our next class on November 6th. Yes. I'm like, is this over already? This I so fast. I, I I'm not ready to, to go. go longer. Okay, so should I do the question? Yes. Okay, the or originally jack-o'-lanterns were carved out of what? The first jack-o'-lanterns were carved out of what? Mm. I'll give you a hint. It's not a pumpkin. It's not a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, okay. yeah. I go was on. gonna say, it's a, it's a quick Google. <laughs> yeah, you can find it. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us today. Have a very happy and safe oh Halloween. Yes. And we hope to see you in November. Yes, happy Halloween. Bye, Bye. everyone.